Michael James Owen was born in Chester, in Cheshire, England, on the 14th of December, 1979. From the age of eight, his progress was being tracked by some of the nation's leading scouts as he edged his way into the under-10s for Mould Alexander's youth team in Wales. The 12-year-old signed with the Liverpool youth team and began playing for the England under-15s with whom he broke numerous scoring records. In the 1995-96 season, Owen was the star of the Reds' triumphant youth FA Cup run thus earning a professional contract with the Merseyside club on his 17th birthday. The teenager was benched against Sunderland and Spurs as the season wound down, but Roy Evans offered Owen his debut in the final 30 minutes at Selhurst Park, 2-0 down to Wimbledon. Fed through in behind the back line, the number 18 slotted away his first in the famed red jersey on a dream debut that exhibited why Michael Owen was a name to remember. When first choice marksman Robbie Fowler broke his leg, a path was paved for Owen to prove himself as the man to lead the Liverpool line back to the table's top spot, and after a sluggish start, he did just that. February 1998 saw the 18-year-old net his first Premier League brace and hat-trick as well as making his senior England debut, becoming the youngest player of the century to represent England. Six more came for Owen before Liverpool's disappointing year came to a close. Trophyless and sat in third place, the Reds' title drought continued, but their goal-scoring youngster was met with non-stop praise. His 18 converted in the top flight included crucial, point-saving goals for which the Liverpool Echo christened him their saviour. What a talent! Recognition also came from the PFA, naming the Golden Boot winner Young Player of the Year, instantly making him the talking point of the footballing world. His status was boosted after signing a £2.5 million five-year contract with Liverpool, making Owen the highest paid teenager in the history of British football on a weekly salary of £10,000. His outstanding achievements had done enough to convince Glenn Hoddle that he had to bring Owen to France for the 1998 World Cup. England's youngest ever player to feature at a World Cup also became the country's youngest ever scorer with a goal against Romania, which won him a starting spot in their ultimate group game versus Colombia, a match they needed to win. Having comfortably collected the three points, Owen held his place in the 11 for their knockout match against international rivals Argentina. In a fixture drenched with history, the prodigy established himself among supporters as a new lion to admire. One nil down, his lightning pace overwhelmed the South American back line and won a penalty for Alan Shearer to bury. And it's one -one. Then, he adeptly controlled Beckham's ball and drove again at Roberto Ayala, who he wrong-footed before expertly lifting the ball past the helpless Carlos Roa. It was an invaluable moment, not only due to the goal's quality, but also because it was the biggest possible stage, exposing the raw talents of Owen to a global audience of hundreds of millions. An ensuing Beckham red card and spot kick elimination angered English viewers upon their return home, but while the United midfielder became public enemy number one, Owen departed France as the new golden boy of the Three Lions. The Hoddle named baby-faced assassin had won over his nation, and the public voted Owen the BBC Sports Personality of the Year. Michael Owen. The boy from Chester refused to be distracted from the upcoming 1998-99 season. The number 10 put away a glorious 15-minute hat-trick at St James's Park, showcasing the traits that made him so deadly. Blessed with electric speed, he left the Geordies for dead, and his assured finishing had truly blossomed Owen into a world-class striker before hitting his 20th birthday. I don't think I've seen the likes of this young lad in my life. 
confidence radiated from him, and after his quadruple against Nottingham Forest, the league was left speechless. Again, Owen found the back of the net 18 times in the Premier League to retain the golden boot, but his season was cut short by a persistent hamstring injury. This trouble wasn't at all surprising, as the Englishman's sudden bursts of pace from stationary were eventually going to take a toll. As a result, he spent five months out of action in the latter half of 1999, returning to a ship with a new captain in Gerard Houllier, who replaced Roy Evans as manager. A frustrating January ensued. With only six games under his belt, Owen again damaged his hamstring at Anfield, rendering him unplayable for a month while he received foreign treatment. The Reds were noticeably dependent on their striker, as his absence cost them European football. The summer of 2000 presented a chance for Owen to re-announce himself on the international stage, journeying with England for Euro 2000. Injured throughout qualifying, the side had struggled to actually make it to the tournament, even enduring a mid-campaign managerial change of Kevin Keegan over Hoddle. Owen, alongside Shearer, ultimately failed to save the three Lions, who suffered a shocking exit at the group stage, in spite of their excellent squad. Hungered for game time, and now fully fit, he returned to Anfield in the new millennium, hell-bent on Scouse success. In his most prolific year yet, Owen stepped up across all competitions for Liverpool, However, his 16 in the league were intermittently scored, missing out on 10 matches overall, but enjoying two separate spells of back-to-back -back striking. In September, he converted seven in just four consecutive games, prior to, in May, repeating the streak with seven from the final four matches, aiding Julia's side to a UCL spot. In their EFL Cup run, he only featured twice, putting away one goal, on the road to his first piece of silverware in February. More impressively, their second final was for the FA Cup in May against Arsenal, who led the Liverpudlians by a single goal until, with seven minutes to play, Owen acrobatically punted an equaliser past David Seaman. Then, using his signature speed, he latched onto a long ball and struck away the winner to erupt the Millennium Stadium. Owen's four UEFA Cup goals played a part in reaching the crazy final against Alaves, a game the Reds won 5-4 after extra time, two of which he assisted. This completed a memorable treble for Liverpool, and Hulier's finest year from the dugout, an achievement spearheaded by Owen. Goals from the number 10 in both the Charity Shield and UEFA Super Cup helped Liverpool become the first English team to win five trophies in one calendar year. The 22-year-old was recognised both domestically and in Europe for his individual excellence in the past 12 months, and was the recipient of the Ballon d'Or award ahead of Madrid's Raúl, who many believed was more deserving. As the only Englishman to lift the golden ball since 1979, rumours emerged of his transfer to a more high-profile club. Soon after scoring his 100th Liverpool goal, and Owen, 100! Real Madrid's president, Florentino Perez, in the midst of his well-publicised Galactico project, openly pursued Owen, who he wanted to partner Ronaldo with on a quest for European dominance. Yet, backed completely by Hulier, the European Player of the Year stayed put, keen to push for the Premiership that they would go on to finish runner-up to in May. The approaching World Cup was to be Owen's first as the primary centre-forward following Shearer's retirement, and he had been crucial to England on their road to Asia, scoring six times in qualifying, which included a hat-trick in their historic 5-1 triumph over Germany. Denmark conceded Owen's first of the tournament, and in their quarter-final versus Brazil, the Wonder Boy made his mark on the score sheet before the elite talents of Salasau could touch it. England are in front! Seconds prior to the referee's half-time whistle, 
Rivaldo quashed the British lead, preceding Ronaldinho's unbelievable free kick to provide major English heartbreak. Wow, what a blow. Further disappointment came in the Reds' 2002-03 campaign. A strong unbeaten run lasted until November, when a horrific 11-game winless streak killed not only title hopes, but those of the Champions League. The short striker had scored 28 goals in all competitions. Fantastic from Michael Owen! Even one against the Red Devils of Manchester, who they bested to reclaim the League Cup. Their one glorious moment in a dreadful season. Off the back of an injury hampered 2004, with intermittent game time due to niggling ankle and hamstring problems, Owen couldn't salvage any more than fourth place for Liverpool. Hulier's sacking that May was the final straw for the Chester export, and he made an August move to Real Madrid, granting Perez's long-term wish. He departed Anfield as Liverpool's eighth all-time best goalscorer, with 158 from 297 matches, and every season from 1998 to 2004, he was the top scorer for the Reds. Consequently, Scouse fans, who had seen the meteoric rise of Owen, lost some love for him, and many supporters felt he ran down his contract before abandoning the club for a modest £8 million. Nonetheless, Owen was now a Galactico, training alongside the likes of Ronaldo, Raul and Figo, who finally offered him some competition. The major club of the Spanish capital was a superstar one at the time, packed to the brim with the greats of the game, and pressure mounted. Criticism from the fans and the media was drawn to the Englishman after a lethargic start, failing to mirror the man he was in Merseyside. Owen drew first blood against Valencia, which sparked a four-game series of scoring, linking up with the Brazilian in the way Perez had intended. Unfortunately, his goal a game form petered out, and Owen went on to score sporadically for the remainder of the season, being used as a substitute 16 times in the league. Despite his critics, Owen's 13 La Liga goals in 1,878 minutes gave him the highest ratio of goals scored to number of minutes played, above the season's top scorers Samuel Eto and Diego Forlan. For this reason, it's unfair that the Englishman's Spanish spell was considered a bad one, and the transfer was labelled a flop by the time of his departure. Still only 25, and deterred by the high-profile signings of Robinho and Julio Baptista, Owen looked for a move back to the Premier League, specifically aiming to return to Anfield. However, Madrid's asking price was too steep for Liverpool, and Newcastle paid a club record fee of around £17 million to line Owen up alongside Alan Shearer and rekindle their national team flame. It was with the Magpies that his career began to spiral downwards, starting with a pre-season thigh injury. After converting a perfect hat-trick against West Ham in December, he broke a metatarsal bone in his foot, leading to multiple surgeries and his recovery process lasted four months, meaning Owen would be fit in time for the 2006 World Cup. Inside the first minute of England's third group game, he tore his ACL by awkwardly twisting his knee while making a pass, wrapping up what would be his final major tournament with England. With news that the striker could be out for the entirety of Newcastle's 2006-07 campaign, a club versus country row broke out, blaming the FA for allowing Owen to play while still injury prone. Newcastle claimed compensation worth £10 million, enabling them to pay Owen's £110,000 weekly wage. 2007 was disastrous for the Englishman, and as a result, Newcastle, with Owen regularly picking up thigh strains and needing a double hernia operation, thus reducing his game time to 15 matches that year. Owen's form and fitness drastically deteriorated butchering his market value. The operation to his knee and constant thigh trouble 
killed both his pace and confidence. Instead of sprinting in behind and taking on defenders as he was known for in his pomp, Owen had to change his approach, knowing that a bursting run could sideline him for a month. A miserable time in the Northeast dissuaded him from accepting the new contract offered to him in December 2008, and it appeared his career was coming to a close. A measly eight Premier League goals did little to help the Magpies, who, under temporary manager Alan Shearer, were relegated for the first time in 15 years. Owen waited until June to become a free agent and signed for another side, which, to the surprise of all, was to Liverpool's historic arch rivals, Manchester United, on a two year pay as you play deal. This agreement further marred his relationship with the Scouse fans, who he had first abandoned and then betrayed in their eyes. Geordies were left deflated by the time of his withdrawal. Their initial excitement was extinguished by Owen's aggravating injuries, which limited him to only 71 appearances in four years. A decade later, Owen admitted his regret over the Newcastle transfer and that his stint had been dismal, which sparked a feud between he and Alan Shearer, who slammed his former England strike partner for his mediocre performances. Competing with Wayne Rooney and Dimitar Berbatov, the 29-year-old was never going to be used as a regular starter, and across the next three years spent at Old Trafford, Owen only featured 31 times in the red shirt. The champagne moment of his Mancunian stint was scoring the seventh goal and winner in the Manchester derby. Oh, this is incredible! A year later, he finally became a Premier League champion, making 11 appearances for the Red Devils to earn a title winner's medal. When United refused to offer Owen a new contract in May 2012, he journeyed to the West Midlands and sported the red and white striped shirt of Stoke City for a last dance in the English top flight. His sole goal for the Potters was a consolation against Swansea to become only the seventh player ever to reach 150 Premier League goals. Owen's eventual retirement came in May 2013, receiving a standing ovation in Southampton. Michael Owen's story is not a fresh take in the history of football. Van Basten, George Best, Marco Royce, Gareth Bale, the list is endless for stars whose talents skyrocketed them for a short time until injuries crashed them back down to earth. A Chester boy wonder breaking national records while still in his teenage years and on the road to legend status for Liverpool. The raw, unmatched pace and confidence in front of goal made him unplayable in the late 90s, and with the golden ball in his 21-year-old hands, it seemed as if he had only just begun. Alas, with his Anfield departure, he essentially said farewell to a career with such promise. Injuries plagued his final six years in the sport, to which he surrendered his speed and conviction, and with certain behind-closed-doors decisions, he somewhat tarnished his name. Across the country, his loyalties have been questioned, and particularly in Newcastle, some think of Owen as a self-involved striker, more interested in his contract negotiations and the next steps than setting foot on the pitch and performing. Owen is perhaps a star who shone too soon, as he played so often for the Reds as a teen that his body suffered early into his 20s and became a burden. The gloom and doom that surrounds him now is mostly down to the fact that people forgot how good Owen was at his peak, tearing apart experienced internationals at the World Cup and embarrassing iconic European defenders. Forever will he remain one of England's and Liverpool's greatest, yet it's curious to imagine how differently his career would have turned out if he never left Merseyside. <laughs>